Good morning, everyone. Here's your weather hazard briefing, and we will continue with showers and thunderstorms all the way through Friday. And some of these thunderstorms may produce a little bit more rainfall, but a lot of them are still going to be on the dry side. And we're going to have to watch this daily just to see where we might see isolated versus scattered coverage. It's going to be changing quite a bit just because this type of pattern is conducive to these quick changes in a short amount of time and just have to kind of play it by ear or do some uh, more short-term, uh, less lead time changes than we normally would like to do. Otherwise, we're still continuing to continu uh, advertise extreme heat and potential for all-time record highs as high pressure builds over our region by the time we get to even as early as Sunday. Satellite loop this morning shows the first wave of moisture lifting north away from us this morning. There's been some lingering showers and storms over the Central Mountains, also up around uh, Manida Park, or Manida Pass, excuse me, in Highland Park. Here comes the next wave in from the south, and that will be getting here as we get into the afternoon hours, especially once we get to mid to late afternoon. Looking at the weather and impacts outlook, you can see where we have many days of moderate impacts across the area. The areas we have li highlighted as major impacts over the next couple of days. For today, we're highlighting the South Hills and the Southeast Highlands for that scattered thunderstorm coverage. That's where we have red flag warnings in effect for uh, this afternoon into this evening. These are conditional for the South Hills, the Southeast Highlands, and the Eastern Highlands. That would basically be uh, for those areas tomorrow and then for Friday over into the eastern high areas along closer to the Wyoming border. Again, this is probably going to change. Other areas will see showers and thunderstorms. Uh, most of these storms are producing a lot of rain. Wind gusts today should easily exceed 40 miles per hour with uh, the stronger storms that we get to develop out there. As we go into Saturday, it's a rather calm day. I quotes. We do have a northeast wind lake event potentially Saturday across the Snake Plain. Otherwise, dry and breezy conditions. There might be a few uh, lingering afternoon showers and storms down around Bear Lake. Otherwise, Again, northeast winds on Sunday might have a northeast wind lake event for American Falls Reservoir. Otherwise, the start of hot and dry weather coming our way. And we're going to show you something a little bit different. We did this yesterday, actually. It kind of gives you an idea of where the higher potential for lightning and thunderstorms will be. Here we are by mid-afternoon, and you'll notice down across the Utah border, especially once you get west of Malad towards City of Rocks, those areas heading along into southwest Idaho, into northern Nevada. That's where we're going to see the higher potential for thunder, and some of these uh, percentages are getting close to 50% as we go into the late afternoon hours, and definitely in the southeast corner of, or southwest corner of Idaho, into southeast Oregon, and also northern Nevada. You also see an increase in thunderstorms across portions of the upper Snake Plain into the Island Park and Centennial Mountains. I think today, actually, if you're up around, say, Salmon, Chalice, west of Highway 93, even Stanley, you may not see any thunderstorms for today. might be a storm-free day, but we can't rule it out because any storms to the east could send outflow boundaries that direction and, and kick off uh, some isolated thunderstorms in those areas. But chance is low, but not zero at this point. We go into the uh, right around 6 o'clock, and honestly, even over into the eastern islands around, uh, I'd say, Palisades, also even around Blackfoot, Idaho Falls, there might be a few isolated thunderstorms just because these storms, are a lot of them are going to be producing outflow boundaries. So we go into the overnight hours, you'll see shower uh, thunderstorm potential lingering up towards Island Park. I think at this point, also down around Jackpot and the City of Rocks, it looks like we might see isolated thunderstorms uh, basically in the southeast corner over towards Bear Lake as well through midnight. That potential will be decreasing during the overnight hours and we'll get to sunrise for tomorrow. So going back and looking at those temperatures for the next few days, the winds outside of thunderstorms are not going to be terribly strong, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about that for right now. Here we are this afternoon, these high temperatures, cooler than we've seen, uh, some places maybe hitting 90, 92 degrees, otherwise 70s and 80s once you get into the mountains. Temperatures tomorrow morning, uh, if in the colder spots, are going to be in the 40s, otherwise 
60 at Burley, 57 in Idaho Falls. So not terribly too far where we from where we are this morning. Just a handful of degrees cooler at this point. And even cooler Thursday, because we've got more humidity in the air and the potential some of these pockets of clouds and showers and thunderstorms that linger during the day, it will be cooler across the board. We're looking at 88 in Chalice, only 83 in Rexburg. Maybe hitting 90 once you get to Shoshone, Jerome, and Twin Falls. And then cooling off a bit more for Friday morning. And just a skosh cooler on Friday across the board. As we go into Saturday, you can see temperatures warming back up. We get into Sunday, we're going to see more 90s returning, especially once you get over towards the Magic and Treasure Valleys. We've been talking about this record heat potential coming uh, by the time we get to next week. And just kind of looking, this is, we're going to use Burley as an example for this morning. For afternoon highs, the most likely range will be 92 to 98 degrees, but it could reach 100 in Burley on Monday. Uh, the most likely range for Tuesday is going to be 96 to 102, but it could be even warmer than that, closer to 105, 106 as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, a little bit more spread, but still looks like we are looking at over 100 degrees. And look at that high end mark. We can't say it's not <laughs> can't pos it's not possible, especially with just how dry it's been. We might see temperatures over 105 in Burley. And just to show you how it's going to be warm up in the mountains, we're going to take a look at Stanley. Stanley does, it can get hot in Stanley, but not necessarily this hot. We're looking at a range on Sunday of about 86 to 92 degrees. The range 90 to 95 most likely on Monday, but could be in the mid upper 90s by then. And look at this on Tuesday. The most likely temperature range in the Stanley area is 92 to 98, but can't rule out it hitting 100 degrees on Tuesday and maybe 101 on Wednesday with the temperatures ranging in the mid, potentially in the mid to upper 90s in that area. So it just proves it's going to be hot pretty much everywhere with that ridge over us by the early part of next week. So like I said, we do have to contend with showers and thunderstorms through Friday at this point. A lot of these storms are going to produce gusty winds and not a lot of rain, but a few of them, a uh, nice little beneficial downpour is expected. Have a great day, and do stay safe out there, everyone.